things fall. So we need to place our character piece on Owl's Magic Market. Yeah. So after arriving at Owl's Magic Market, we spend several hours looking for someone who can decipher the parchment's text, but to no avail. Deciding to drown your sorrows, you head to the market's watering hole. While sipping back on some foul moonshine, you can't help but notice a woman at the far end of the bar. Long, dirty charcoal hair, pale skin, and a glimmer of the brightest blue light from the corner of her eye. She quickly takes note of you as well, and as she turns her head to you, you see her, her blazing blue eyes in all their glory. A grim slinger. She takes a seat at your table and slides a shot at you. Both of you and nod before gulping down the ungodly tonic. Well, well, if it isn't a fellow grin, name's Marceline, and it's always a pleasure to meet another lost soul. What sort of business does the wretched old machine have you up to? You tell her about the Witch King and the undecipherable parchment. They give you a real suicide mission, rookie. Must have a lot of faith in you. Or just testing the waters, I suppose. Not sure Icarus is one for having faith. You might not know this yet, but he ain't much of a witch. What he is, is a con man. Best con man in the whole world, I'd wager. Wouldn't be surprised if he was conning his own grins. She throws a sack of coins at the barkeep who grunts and tosses over the room, which she impressively snatches midair without looking. I wish I could help you out, but I got my own problems. Come to think of it, though, an old friend of mine, Hank, he owes me a favor. He's huddled up somewhere in this here valley. If you come across him, just mention that I'll eat his scarly little heart out if he doesn't help you. Oh, and send him my love. A devilish grin flashes across her face. All right, enough of that. I want to hear all about your foray into the Grimslinger life while we put this here bottle to shame. After a few hours of chatting over drinks and cards, we bid her farewell and head back out to the valley in search of clues. So the next time players visit Hank the Hunter, they may hire him for free. And that's Hank right there. So whenever we find him... He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> so we can uh, travel in any direction in search of clues. It would be good to visit Hank the Hunter before you finally challenge the Witch King. Okay, so the next thing, once we resolve two nodes, then we go back to the book. Let's go fight something. Fight something. Well, Alright, we can do that. Uh, let's take a little roundabout, so we'll go right here and we'll fight something. So, Mr. I Wanna Fight, roll the die. Chupacabra! Awesome. Cabra. What do you start out with? Let's see. Two players, nine health, and ten energy. So, nine health. And. Supplies and stuff out of the way here. Tenant. In and one creature modifier. Starving. Half the starting and max HP and energy of this creature rounded up. So he only has five energy and five health. Just rounded up. So five and five now. So we have a lucky break. Oh, good, good. <clears throat> Shuffle six cards here. Yeah. Let's see what his card is. And it's 
goat gaze. It seemed like a good idea to distract the creature, and so I took it upon myself to play the part. Never before had I impersonated a goat so well or tried. This creature gains three health and energy unless one foe chooses to impersonate a goat. The goat impersonator must deactivate any unresolved cards they played this turn and take three damage. So it either gains health by three or one of us takes three damage. <laughs> You're gonna be the goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That gets. So now you're doing what? Two damage? Uh, it doesn't. All right. Yours yeah. had to be deactivated. That's right. Do I only deactivate one? Yeah. Just okay. just the one that you haven't used. So I will do three damage to him, knock him down to two health. But I gain an energy, so I'm up to eight now. Play Earth and gain two of my hit points back. Hopefully. Now I'll play water. I mean, still get more energy. This card is. Hoot and Holler. They began making quite an unsettling ruckus. All foes lose three energy. This creature gains three energy. because we'll kill it. Guts Ritual Item Card from the Item Deck. Each player also gains one level. Wow. They may draw one random item from the deck. So, Cabra Guts Ritual Card gets out. We gain one level, so we'll be at level five. These are all spells from the deck. Yeah. Spells, these are the items. So, Cabra Guts. You can discard them all and then draw one item from your choice from the item deck. Oh. So that's Deck Keeper. Not too shabby. Guts, what do these do? Let's see, these are sure to discuss or distract anyone and anything. No more cards will resolve this turn and the duel ends. Gain no levels, rewards, or loot. Cannot be used in a duel that was initiated by this story. So basically, that's your escape card. I guess one of my supplies. <laughs> Treat this node as if it were a rest node. Gain the appropriate amount of health and energy, which is two. Uh, bed and breakfast is discard two items and return to full health and energy. 
or trade with Beardy the Minotaur for every four items you discard right now, you can select any one card of your choice from the item deck or discard pile. It can't be an instant. Discard pile. Just treat as a rest node. Something a good idea. Get my energy back to where I was at the beginning of this whole thing. And we don't get our spells back, though, right? Right. Yeah. We, we can. I think that you can take this time to do that. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. That's part of the rest. I want to get two health and energy. You may also do, may either reactivate three energy for five deactivated cards, reload or purge ability, just one of them. Reorganize your hand, trading number of item cards, or you just stand off type item. So, I will spend three. Go ahead and get my spells back. One more node, either an event or the attack, and then we'll see what the story tells us. Hopefully an event so we don't get screwed up. What do you think? Sure, I'm to me. We'll go to the event. Not card, see what we got. <clears throat> Anomaly. A strange field of energy appears, damning your progress. A mass of shifting hues and blinding light dances midair as it whisks. Uh, oh. As Wisp of Energy to reach out, beckoning team. Okay, players take turns choosing an action. Action 1, discard your lightning spell to repel the energy trendles from you. 2 is roll. The field bursts and 3 damage. It's 1 to 2. And 3 to 4 is they wrap around you and gain 5 energy points. 5 and 6, the <laughs> tendrils slap you across the face with electrical whoop, lose 5 energy points. We're either losing or gaining. Hmm. Okay. So what do you want to do? Leave it to me! We have to decide. I know it. Because if we roll, and if just one of us rolls a one or a two, then we both take damage and that's it. Okay. So, we either do that or discard it, which we're just using it, so you can get it back. I'll choose you roll. <laughs> Knowing my luck, it'll be lose fire energy, and I don't have five to lose, so I don't want to lose energy. But, so we need a three or a four. That's really what we want. Okay. You're going to make your roll this, are you? Yeah, because I'll roll high. No, oh, you'll roll high. So either way, we're going to loss, so... It's goodbye energy. That's the energy one? Yeah. Five of them? Yeah, there's five. Oops. Would have happened either way. Discard pile. Alright, so now we'll make it to Hank the Hunter. Well, actually, let's read the story first. Uh, your heart suddenly sinks into your chest. Your vision blurs and the sounds of the valley become muffled. The light bends around some giant invisible force before you. From out of the darkness appears a demon. It looks to be about three stories tall while crouched over, smoke and ash streaming off its black form. A pair of haunting red eyes catches yours as it lifts its head, adorned with a mess of horns. It writhes, shrieking, morphing into a dark-suited man in a cap, its skin transforming into something more natural. Stepping forward, the demon tips his hat to you. So this is what Icarus has been working on all these years, he says. 
eyeing you up and down while walking in a circle around you. I must say, it's a bit underwhelming, though I appreciate what he's done with the eyes there. I suppose it's a jab at me, ha ha. Its laugh echoes through the air. Allow me to introduce myself. I am known as Hephistil, Lord of Darkness, Eater of Souls, Keeper of the Forgotten West, Father of Black Eden, Son of Hexel. Your anima jokingly pretends to snore, but you shove it away, hinting that it should keep quiet. Oh, don't worry, the machines have never been much for respect, Icarus included. I do miss our days together. Either way, I've heard that he's expecting you miserable wretches to defeat the Witch King. I couldn't be more amused by the thought. Your anima growls and barks, but the demon snaps its fingers and a black sphere encapsulates the robot, silencing and suspending it in the air. Tell you what, I enjoy a good show, and being the philanthropist that I am, I shall help you summon the self-proclaimed Witch King. Just make sure the duel lasts longer than one round, will you? It's so hard to find good entertainment these days. Few things are as entertaining as watching yet another plan of Icarus fail. Hephistial goes on to explain the writing on the parchment you found. It lists a set of ritual items and incantations for summoning the Witch King. He tells you that all these items can be obtained in the Valley of Death. Hephistial then spout he spouts off a few words and several tiny demons crawl out of his chest, carrying a box. They leave it at your feet before all of them quickly blink out of sight. You hear a faint, I'll be watching, followed by some stereotypical, maniacal laughter. So we draw two ritual items. If you have all the ritual items already, you gain two levels of return, health, and energy. So we get to draw two items that are ritual. We don't have all six ritual items. We must obtain them either by defeating the required creatures or trading for them at the Valley Haven and Alice Magic Market. It's also possible to obtain the ritual items through the Vault of the Bandit King, Pit of Pain, House of Cards, and or the Goblin's Grotto. Before you start part three, make sure you're ready for a challenging fight. So basically we gotta move around the map and fight until we are able to get the rest of the ritual items. Fill it at the bottom, correct? Or at the top or something. Check the top. Jeez. Give you half. Discarded artifact, there we go. At the top. Hmm. Ritual. Ritual items have a glowing border to them, make them easier to identify. So if they got a blue border, 
That's the one you look for. <clears throat> I have the cavern guts, and I have the human heart. So those are were already in my inventory. So then we just had to pick one. Ghost not. Okay. So that'd be three. So I'm still missing one. Because it should be six total. Oh, I had the worm piece. Okay, there you go. Yeah, right in front of you. Go fake. Yeah. Okay, so we need to at least get these two and just keep it separate because we know we gotta walk around till we finally get to them or Feeding required creatures or trading for them at the Valley Haven or Owl's Market. That's right, get four items to trade and get whatever we want. So, just have to hunt around and. Oh, those two artifacts, correct? Hmm? Two artifacts and then a. Uh... No, just two ritual items. So, the artifacts? Or nothing. So I just shuffle the items deck. <laughs> just two ritual items, and then all, if you have them all, you gain levels. But we did we only have just a few. Actually, we hit three of them, which is pretty nice. So we picked up one, and we need two more. So we gotta do some more fighting or events. We can go to Al's Market or Valley Haven. Bolt, the Bandit King, Pit of Pain, House of Cards, basically another place. Okay. That's what we need to do. But we need to have all those cards before we can continue to part three. So. Uh, well. Hank the Hunter. The lone tree stands erect in the desert. Atop it sits a worn down shack. Surrounding the tree's perimeter are wooden palisades and briar filled trenches. You can see several skulls and rib cages from all kinds of creatures stuck on the spikes. The shack has a balcony on which is sitting Hank, whittling away another spike while simultaneously pointing a rifle, pistol, and cannon at you. <laughs> so. We have to choose his option as a group. Trade some items for Hank's services by discarding five items, but we get to get them for free. That's right, from doing the bar thing, so we get them for free. So we don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, it would have cost five items to discard together. So now we can place. One player may place the Hank the Hunter card in their stash. This card may move to the character space during a duel. Discard Hank the Hunter card as soon as the duel's over in which the card was used. So you want to hold on to him? Well, it's a good. Until we fight the Witch King. This comes with him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's his item, I guess. So that was set up. So. Alright, so we got Hank the Hunter. Hooray! Huzzah! We're on a landmark. A landmark we can not do much. Just access and organize your hand. For resolving a landmark's no to action, so. Um, I don't have any energy, so. Hopefully. 
we can change that. So I'm going to spell it and get energy back. So. Magic Market, or House Pit of Pain. House of Cards? Uh, well, yeah, we could go to House of Cards too. Either way, it's still event or attack. So, whichever one you want to do. You're almost out of energy. I suppose we should go to event. That, that is an event. That yeah. Is, yes. Probably getting attacked by 50 billion little things. Death from above. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Sky darkens as you look above you. As you look above you, spot what the heck? Sky darken. And as you look, can you read? <laughs> wow, my eyes are not working correctly. Let's try this again. The sky darkens, and as you look above you, spot. Read that! It just, something doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, the sky darkens and as you look above you, spot a very large creature flying overhead. It calls and begins circling you. Turn out, it was a bad idea to eat those eggs. Okay, so we gotta choose an action. Action 1. Discard enough spells that if played, would total 5 damage. The creature then leaves you alone. Action 2. We'll draw cards until left alone. If you draw one, it swoops down, grabbing you and throwing you several feet, taking two damage. Two through four, it's dropping bombs, in quotation. Pay one energy to dodge them or get hit and lose one health and what's left of your dignity. Or a five, you find a place to hide and the creature leaves you alone. It's not a one, it'll be alright. Son of a. Oh no! It's a one, it swoops down, grabbing me, and I take two damage. So, what do you want to do? A four? Four. It's dropping bombs. I guess got pooped on. Pay one energy to dodge or get hit and lose one health. So. I'm out of there. Okay. So, dodged. That wasn't so bad. It was kind of weird. <laughs> you weren't the one who got pooped on. <laughs> I'm a little dog over here. <laughs> dog you got pooped on. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. Me and the professor, we just took a little bit of damage. We're alright. We got plenty of health. <laughs> alright. After that embarrassing event is over, on to House of Cards. See what we got in store here. Why the hell I could not read that sentence? It just didn't roll right. Just you. Anyways, a small hobble nearly buried in sand. A crossy old thing beckons you inside to play a game of chance. You feel unlucky? So we must choose an action. We can decline, ignoring him, he's ugly, you continue on your way. Or play the game. Players may decide on one person to play the game. You may only win once before the creature throws you out in a huff. Follow each step to play the game. So let's see. Uh, play the game. So the wagers. Any player may offer up items as a wager. Randomly draw triple that amount of items and place them in front of you. This is the creature's wager. If you win, you gain those cards and keep your own. If you lose, everything you wagered is discarded. If you tie, you keep your cards and discard the creatures. So that's the wager. So you gotta offer up items, which I would uh, offer up 
bell. Well, no, you have two items, yeah. So if you lose, then you have to discard it. In other words, you lose all your items. <laughs> it's not a dice roll, is it? Uh, I don't know. Let's see the game. Uh, this works nearly the same as a face-off. You and the creature are trying to get to a total in hand value of 11 points. So it sounds like Blackjack. Mm -hmm. Or as close to it without going over. Uh, yeah. Anyone that goes over 11 loses immediately, ending the game. You and the creature will take turns drawing cards from the number deck. The game starts by the player drawing a card for themselves, then one for the creature. And then you just keep going. When it's the creature's turn, they must always draw a card unless they already have a total hand value of 11. If you hold, the game ends and the creature will draw one more card if their hand value is lower than yours. So it's Blackjack. <laughs> That's what it says. That's how the game's played. Do you want to do it or not? So we're actually, it doesn't even give us an option to, well, random. I guess we probably should shuffle those in. Just in case, oh, because this will be at random. You don't actually get to choose. Oh. Well, what if we don't have that item? I can't bet something we don't have. Well, I mean, you have to bet items. All oh, that you do have. That you have, because you're going to bet. Then you get triple that? Any player may offer up items as a wager, so how, whatever you want to bet. Then you randomly draw triple whatever you wagered and place them in front of you. That's the creature's wager. So, whatever you bet is three times the amount of what the creature will have. I'll bet two supplies. Supplies. So it'll be randomly six cards. No, triple. Yeah, that's right. Six. So go ahead and shuffle the DNC cards over here. Did that after you pulled that? Oh, did you? Right. What's your. Trash. Right, shuffle them again. There, this, is your <laughs> <laughs> this is your we're talking about. Alright, so randomly. Six cards. So, there's uh, one, two, oh, three. This is his, because you're betting yours. Okay. This is his random, because you got to do it randomly. So, what do we got? Four, uh, five, one more. Go this way, go everywhere. Alright, so that is his wager, randomly. Just put it right in the middle. Where he knows creatures. You're going to draw well, the top one is yours, and the other one is the creatures. Five and a two. So now you have a four, that's nine. Come on, I think I'm going to stay. Stay, and he's got seven. seven. Draw one more. Eight. Ten. So whatever you had, you lost. <laughs> she got over there. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. No, we're not gonna, well, you know, we'll just keep that there, because we don't know what it is. And I'll find two cards. Oh, I know, those artifacts. Get rid of those artifacts. Discarded artifacts. Throw them out there. I'll just shuffle. Let me shuffle my own doom. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> that makes sense. Alright. Top card is mine. Two. That's a good start. House with a four. Take an ace. This gets a three, so it's up to seven. I have three right now. Ooh, take a four, so that's seven. Five, eight, ten. Twelve! Ha -ha. I won! <laughs> Woohoo! Whatever the random package here. What I got. Yeah, I didn't get the item we needed, but I got another piece of the treasure map. All right. 
And another one. Ha ha! All right, I got three of those. We'll get to that in a minute. Ah, picked up another artifact. Ancient spell tablet. Good thing your anima reads ancient gibberish incantations for seekers jubilee. Look through the item deck and take any one card. Reshuffle there afterwards. So there's one. Then I got secret stash. Immediately draw two more random cards. So I pick one, shuffle, then I can randomly pick two. Celerity Shroom. A rare fungi that enhances perception so much that the world appears to be in slow motion. Any card you play next phase will have its number reduced to one. So now it's going to go first. When we do our turn order, like in fighting, it'll be down to one, so it'll go first. That's a good one. Unless the creature has a one, then the creature always goes first. We'll let you have that one. Okay. But let's, let's get that, uh, get that artifact out of there. Boy, it's buried pretty deep. That's one down. We got one more to go. But let's see if I can randomly draw it. That'd be a miracle. <laughs> Out of this huge deck, that'd be a miracle. <laughs> yes. Got that weird look in your eyes right there. What are you trying to think of when you're hurting yourself right now? Deck builder. A deck builder? Okay. Then I backed. Uh huh. Then I backed the sequel. Okay. It's coming out really soon. Like it, the games are in. Okay. And the name of it is. Legendary. Aeon Zen. Zen. Oh, oh, good. The yeah. Expansions and all that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we saw that at Gen Con. Yes. Alright, I gotta pick two cards here randomly. Uh, that one and and Nope, didn't get it, but got another treasure map piece. Jug of Spoiled Water. Nothing like stinky water to quench your thirst. Play this card with lightning or ice and adds one damage. Ah. And it's a combine, so it go, it'll just add with it and all that great stuff. So, let's see, let's get these treasure map pieces. One item of your choice from the item deck. Ha. So there it is. Cash those in, and then I can grab the artifact. <laughs> what, what luck! What right. luck! Yeah, there it is. Huh. Okay, now we have them all. Yep. Well, that was fun. Six. Try to get rid of those artifacts. <laughs> oh yeah, I need two items every. Right. That's right. Okay, let's go on my stash. Let's see. So, uh, you're ready to fight, is basically what they're preempting to, which I would say I need energy. Okay. A lot of energy. Yeah, because I'm out as well. Um, so I think it would be a good idea to have that before we go into battle. Hmm.
should probably head back toward see, Valley Haven because that's a, a rest spot. That's what I was thinking as well. Just trying to think. Titan is where we can discard items to get that much health and energy. Or, I think it's or. No, and. And. So, however many items you discard, get rid of, that's how much you get back. So, let's see. Valley Haven over here. And then Lone Titan is over here. So, that's not bad. So, we can do an event, go to Valley Haven, get some help. Two and two. Attack fight, whatever you want to reference it as, and then go to Lone Titan and thin out our stash. Okay. Or at least, yeah. That's not like a really good spot. That's good. Otherwise, you got an event, a health spot way out here, and then another event, and then going to Goblin Grotto. Which does not sound all that fun. You know, just the... Yeah, that's the one. Hit of the pain. sneaking one. Yeah. Hit of pain. Where's that one? We've been there, have we? Oh, no, that's just uh, a fighting pit. Oh. Bad idea. So, I think, yeah, Valley Haven and then going to the... Let's do a Jezebel Bridge. What is the Jezebel Bridge? What's that one? Oh, you gotta roll it down. You gotta roll... No, you do... That was the card thing. You gotta try and make it across and... Oh, however right. many cards. You gotta pay energy to... Oh, really, you only get a level out of it, so you're not really getting health out of it. So let's not go there. Okay. Not so that bridge is bad juju. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're going to travel over here and do the uh, event card. 